Hey, hey, everybody. Welcome back to Weather Center Nazario. I've been away for 24 hours, but it's nice to see all of you tuning in today. Happy Monday. Happy first Monday of October, for that matter. We've had some pretty interesting changes over the last 48 hours since we last spoke on Saturday, and we're going to cover all the latest information. But first, let's get right into Tropical Storm Philippe. So we're looking at a close-up satellite shot of Philippe, and boy, it's looking real rough. It's looking very rough out there. That shear is really doing a number on its center of circulation, and as such, we're only getting a close shade through most of our Lesser Antilles. As the most recent satellite loop comes in, you can actually see one of the dissipating lines of thunderstorm activity has actually created a tremendous outflow boundary that's allowing some pretty good thunderstorm activity to propagate off to the west through Guadalupe and Dominica. As a result, we're probably seeing some very heavy rain out there right now, and I would anticipate we're also seeing tropical storm-like winds with these thunderstorms as they rapidly shoot off to the west. This, in fact, is not convection trying to wrap around the center of circulation. What's actually happening with the core of the storm is because of the potent amount of shear we're seeing in the upper levels, we're seeing these outflow boundaries from collapsing thunderstorms that are brewing near to the center of circulation. And that outflow is what's helping to channel those storms off to the west. What an outflow boundary is is essentially a very microscopic frontal boundary at the surface. And as such, you get that converging wind flow at the surface, and you can see that that line of thunderstorm activity shoots off to the west almost immediately in rapid succession along that collapsing cell or that outflow boundary moving off to to the south and west. This storm is just overall not doing too good. As a matter of fact, when you get to the very back end of the run, I want to show you guys something very neat, but you can actually see in the overall grand scheme of the thunderstorm activity with this feature, there's a, almost like a V-notch signature in its core. And you typically see V-notches in severe thunderstorms over interior parts of land, over the Great Plains. I've seen them in western Conus during my time as a forecaster. A V-notch shows incredible amounts of shear in the mid to upper levels of the atmosphere. Very good for micro-scale thunderstorms, updrafts looking to produce hail and tornadic activity. Not so good here for a tropical system. And as a result, those outflow boundaries are going to continue to create almost little weak cold pools down in the low levels, which is why I don't think we're going to get a whole lot of intensification with Philippe anytime soon. But what I really want to focus on are two factors. Number one, for our folks out there in the Lesser Antilles, as you go further south from where those thunderstorms are brewing up, you get into Dominica, Martinique, St. Lucia, even up towards Antigua and Barbuda and further to the west, as you get to the backside of Tropical Storm Philippe, as that center of circulation continues to propagate off to the north and northwest like so, if you track this out, you're going to see all that core convective activity start to go with it. So I do forecast that as we go through the day tonight, tomorrow, and even the day after that, we're going to see the worst conditions begin to settle in because you're going to get into the backside of this storm where a lot of that convective activity has been sheared. Uh, that wind shear in the upper levels is acting like a blow dryer. If you imagine this is supposed to be the head of hair, the, the center, the symmetrical tropical storm, but that blow dryer is just knocking everything off this way. If you can imagine that in real life, guys, I know it's funny, you've probably seen it in the movies or even out there on a gusty day, that's pretty much what's happening with all that wind shear blowing across. So we have about 40, 50 knots of wind shear aloft, and that's probably why we're seeing such weird indications on the satellite while that center is actually displaced off to the northwest of where his most potent thunderstorms are. So give another 24, 36 hours, and you guys out there in the Lesser Antilles are going to start to realize the worst of Tropical Storm Philippe's impacts, Tropical Storm-like conditions, gusty winds with these squall lines, heavy pockets of rainfall, definitely looking to induce some flooding out there, and I'm definitely predicting it's going to be the backside of the storm we want to watch out for, especially as we start to get a little bit more of that inflow that's trying to wrap into the center of circulation despite it maintaining a little bit of a weaker status, that 50 mile an hour center of circulation. That's when most of our severe impacts are going to be felt for much of the Lesser Antilles and further north before it can finally get up out of there. Now this is something that was recently brought to a few of our attentions as we went through the weekend and especially today. I've noticed a couple of other sources are also highlighting this as well and I've been keeping an eye on it myself for the last 24 hours even though you didn't get a video out of me yesterday. I'm watching a little bit more closely for my folks out there in Bermuda and the same area afflicted by post-tropical cyclone Lee in the northeast portions of the United States and eastern Canada. As you look at these super ensemble plots and track them through time, these are our most recent runs between 0 and 12Z today, you can see that we have have a pretty large spread. I will openly say that the GFS is the one that wants to kind of wrap it around and do some weird pinwheeling effect in the central Atlantic, keeping it furthest away from everybody. The ICON, the UK, and the Euro particularly want to take it a little bit further to the north. And the reason that is, is we're expecting the jet energy that affected the northeast produced a large amount of that flooding in that baroclinic slash mature system that dumped all the rain over the northeast is going to have a little bit of breakaway cold air. If you can imagine that this pink line I drew here is the 
jet stream. What's going to end up happening is a pocket of cooler air is expected to break off somewhere in this general area and form an upper level low feature. And as such, as L Philippe tries to track off to the north, I almost said Lee there, as Philippe tries to track off to the north, that cold core low is going to try to attract him and pull him in, kind of like a smaller scale long wave trough that typically pulls these systems in and then ejects them off to the east northeast. In this case, this could be detrimental to his forward progress. It could also impede any further intensification as we go through time, but this is going to put it a lot closer to the likes of Bermuda and the same general area that saw a landfall with Lee not too long ago. So we're definitely keeping a close eye out there. It's really going to determine what happens over the next few days when we see that breakaway jet energy. If the models continue to trend in that department, I've seen a lot of consistency with those three model platforms I previously mentioned. So Bermuda and the Northeast, both Canadian provinces and the Northeast United States, especially after all the flooding you guys got, you're back on my radar. There was a fair bit of confidence this system was going to eject out into the Central and North Atlantic, posing no further harm to anybody outside of our Antilly nations right now. But you're back on the scale, you're back on the microscope, and I know myself and a few others across YouTube and social media are closely watching you in the meteorological department. So we got your back. I'm definitely going to keep you posted because long term, after Philippe can get out of the Caribbean, we're going to see what could possibly happen as he goes four to five days out. All right, guys, we're once again switching gears. We got to talk environmental conditions for the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico because within the last 24, 36 hours, I'll be honest, after all the discussions and the open analysis I shared with you guys last week, the models are starting to do something funky and they started late Saturday and into yesterday, of course, when I'm not available to make a Weather Center Nazario video. But as you can see, the latest Euro predicts that we're going to see a favorable environment stick around for most of October and it actually indicates we could see a little bit of a spike. Looking at the control member here at the very beginning of November, it looks like the main development region as well as especially the Western Caribbean Gulf of Mexico could become very ripe for some possible tropical cyclone development even into the month of November. So I'm going to watch this closely. I definitely want to watch what the MJO does because it's actually anticipated to become a little bit stronger once it parks itself over our tropical AORs of the Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. And I find this really odd but also interesting at the same time that the Euro predicts right about the time we've been talking about that Friday the 13th, if not just after Friday the 13th development, that there's another resurgence of favorable conditions even into November. So we're going to watch this. We may not be out of the woods yet, even if we don't realize anything as early as Friday the 13th. We can't let our guard down just yet, just based on this and the MJO, you know, the upper level large scale dynamics. So this is a neat feature that I just recently started using with this weathermodels.com platform. And what we're doing here is looking at a three panel view to show you guys the consistency that I'm seeing across different models. Top left, you've got our Canadian model. Top right, you've got the German model, the Icon. And then bottom left, we have the KMA, the Korean model. And these are all our 12Z runs. And as you can see, all three of these models are singing in tune that sometime closer to October 9th, if not the 10th, we're going to start seeing something take shape in the western Gulf of Mexico, the Bay of Campeche area. The KMA unfortunately cuts off after that point. We also lose the Icon model, but you can see in that same general area, we're looking at 850 millibar winds, just so we can see above ground level above the surface and get an idea of what our wind field is actually doing and nail down a center of circulation. Some of the lower level products like the Surface and 925 have more of a broad cyclonic curvature indicated in the Gulf of Mexico or a wide low pressure center as opposed to a, a concentrated low pressure center we'd see with a tropical, subtropical, or even a, a jet supported system for that matter. So I'm still seeing some pretty good consistency with our 12Z models, Canadian, German, and the KMA, but the GFS who also jumped on board with the Canadian model previously has done some pretty particular things and I'll show you what it is I'm investigating to determine what could really happen over the Gulf of Mexico. So real quick, we're going to the East Pack and the reason we're taking it over to the East Pack AOR is because this bad boy right here is highlighted by National Hurricane Center. You can see that we have a 70% chance of development over the next week and when you track that forward through time that lines up really well with when some of our models are hinting at Bay of Campeche cyclogenesis. The reason being and we'll switch over to our upper level GFS and we're going to do that two panel view so you get an idea of the differences that I'm seeing between the runs of the GFS. Over here on the left we have our 12Z this is the most up to date and then on the right hand side we have our 0Z what came in late last night and I want you to watch closely as we go through time. El Nino in full effect this is definitely because of El Nino out there guys I'm letting you know right now El Nino is doing some funky stuff with our southernmost pattern across the southern tier United States into Central America. If you watch closely there's a trough that's expected to dig down over Southern California Baja California as well. There you go seeing the development on both of our models. That system that is already highlighted for a 90% chance of development here within the next couple of days. The one out ahead of the system 
I mentioned off of Central America is also going to get picked up and driven inland by the same trough. But I want you to look closely at what the GFS does between runs. This is 240 hours out and take a look at what we have happening over Central America. At 12 Zulu, there's a very, very strong anti-cyclone or difluent air spreading of the air aloft, which would indicate that not only is the pattern aloft in the upper level slowing down, but it's also increasing the favorability that we could see increased thunderstorm activity. The only caveat to that is at 12Z, with that anti-cyclone over land, it'll inhibit any kind of thunderstorm or tropical development for that matter over the Gulf. If you switch gears and turn your attention over to the 0Z, look at where our anti-cyclone is at 0 Zulu or at least according to the 0Z zero zero run. It's actually forming over the Yucatan Peninsula, across much of the Western Caribbean and the Gulf of Mexico. And as a result, because we don't have systems button up against each other, both a trough and a ridge, notice how the 0Z zero zero wants to track our trough axes much faster off to the east into the Gulf before it digs down over the southeastern United States. But at 12Z, we still have it hung up over the Four Corners Desert Southwest. This is why I think the GFS has gone from predicting a tropical system to an El Nino type type low pressure over the southeast to nothing at all. And I'm not even joking. We'll go to the next page. We're going to use this comparison tool one more time. So up in the top left, 12Z. On the right, we have the 6Z. And then down at the bottom, we have our 0Z. 0 and 12 are the more accurate runs because of that live analysis data being plugged into the model. But the 0, 6Z can't be thrown out because it's good for continuity's sake. And as you go through time, if you watch all three panels, I know I'm going through here very quickly, but if you watch closely, you see formation in the Gulf in that bottom left panel headed right towards the state of Florida as maybe a tropical storm. Then on the right panel, you see that we have something over the United States, over the Gulf Coast states, looking more frontal in nature, kind of like what we talked about a number of segments ago in terms of how we can get those very vigorous, potent frontal systems coming across Florida, coming across the southeast, increasing our chances for severe weather. So 0 and 6Z indicate we're still going to have an active weather pattern for Friday the 13th regardless, but then you look at 12Z, and this is one of our biggest gripes across the weather community about GFS, is you see that from 0 to 6 and 12, we went from something big to something just as big, just with different impacts, to nothing. And that could have adverse effects on our forecast going downstream or downrange, if you will, if this continues to go back and forth and back and forth. So going back to what we showed previously at 200 millibars, the jet level, what I have to do for you guys, I'm going to do a lot of homework behind the scenes. I really want to investigate what the Euro, the Canadian, the Icon, and other model platforms for that matter are doing with the trough that's going to steer our tropical systems in the pack into the Gulf of Mexico. Because I think that's really going to determine whether or not we see something tropical or something more jet-influenced, more front. So we have a lot of players once again in the pattern. El Nino's dorking things up as anticipated. We're now in fall and it's brewing up out there. El Nino's only expected to get stronger. Now before we wrap up this video, I want to go back to the Icon model real quick to highlight one other potential disturbance that has been trending for about four to five days now. It's been highlighted on the Icon, the Korean, the UK, and even the Euro, although the Euro kind of depicts it a little bit weaker, a lot less organized. But about five to six days from now, as we get into October 6th, it looks like we can have a tropical wave trying to develop into a disturbance once it makes its way through our lesser Antilles into the central Caribbean. You can kind of see that cyclonic turning in the winds on this 10 meter wind chart according to the icon. Again, this lines up really well with our UK, KMA, and our Euro models as well. So about October 6th into Saturday, October 7th, it looks like you guys down in St. Vincent and the Grenadines, Barbados, Grenada, and Trinidad and Tobago could see another round of tropical thunderstorm activity depending on how much of this energy wants to work over your area before either dissipating or further developing as it gets into the Caribbean. Truthfully, I'm rooting for this one more so than our Gulf of Mexico system just because of how much shear and dry air we're going to have to combat out over the Gulf. So that's kind of a toss-up. Like I mentioned, if we get that tropical energy over Central America into the Gulf, that changes things. But in terms of the Caribbean, we have great wind shear. We have great dynamics. We have great moisture. The hot water's out there. So if anything, we could see development in either category. All that being said, guys, we're going to go ahead and wrap up this Monday iteration of Weather Center Nazario. Thank you so much for tuning in. It looks like we still have a lot of areas to nail down in terms of developmental probabilities. We're still seeing good indications that development is likely somewhere closer to home, whether it be the Caribbean Sea or the Gulf of Mexico. It's really going to determine on all of our moving jigsaw pieces that I talked to you guys about through this video. And it looks like the hurricane season could remain quite eventful as we approach the back end of October, closer to Halloween time, and as we get into the month of November where we approach Thanksgiving and the final conclusion, the big finale 
finale of Hurricane Season 2023. Thank you so much, guys, for tuning in this Monday. I hope you had a wonderful weekend. I hope Monday is off to a positive start as well. October in general is off to a positive start. We'll see you soon. Tonight at 8 p.m., we have our first Tropics Talk of the month of October. I hope to see you there. But until next time, guys, this is Weather Center Nazario signing out.